Hey friends, it's Emily from Life So Savory, and I'm here today with another great sewing project. At least, like always, I hope this one will be great. I haven't specifically sewn this pattern for this exact purpose, so it's always a little bit of a trial and error, but today I'm gonna to try to use my women's free raglan pattern to create a fun holiday nightgown. And I'm actually hoping that I can make my daughter a matching or coordinating one, and then um, we can have some fun holiday nightgowns to enjoy. And um, nightgowns aren't great when it's cold, but you can always wear leggings underneath. And then, um, anyway, so that is what I'm doing today. I'm gonna do my couple of shares, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm so glad you were here. And um, I can't wait to sew this project with you. So let me um, grab this link and we're gonna get started. Let's see. Um, I wanna share this to my group. So I'd love to hear how you all are doing this morning or this evening, this afternoon, whatever it is, and um, what you are up to. I am excited to be here with you, and um, yeah, looking forward to this fun sewing project. Um, and I have a fun giveaway for you as well, so make sure that I tell you about that in just a moment. Um, let me see. Where's this? Where's the video link? Um, I am so glad you guys are here. Again, come in, get settled. I am just going to do two things here before we go ahead and get started. Hi, Greta. I'm glad you guys are here. Trying to find the video. Sometimes it's not that easy. Okay. All right, so welcome. It's Emily and I am so glad you are here. Um, I wanna take a minute um, here at the very beginning and give you a couple of pieces of information. I will remind you and again in a little bit because there's always more people that join us but I have a giveaway for you today. So the um, Sewing Summit, which we do several times a year, and I don't always participate in, just based on my schedule and what I have going on, but I am participating in the Christmas Sewing Summit, which is coming up, the I think, the first week in November. Um, I think so. But we're taking sign-ups now. So it is absolutely free for you to watch the classes within 24 hours of them going live. So just sign up. The link is in the description of this video. You can watch all those classes for free, um, no problem. However, they do also sell an all access pass, which gives you lifetime access to all those classes as well. So if you are interested in purchasing that, you can in addition to signing up for free. But today, I'm going to give one lucky commenter a free all access pass. So leave a comment anytime during today's show about anything. Um, if it's just hi, if it's a question about something I'm doing later on, if it's a comment, anything, leave a comment um, on this live feed. So if you are watching this on a shared video and it says, Life So Savory, share this video too, and it's my sewing group or another group or a one of you share the video and someone comments on it, my little um, selection tool will only take videos on the original video. So click on the video, go to the original and leave a comment for an, ax for an entry into um, getting an all access pass to the Sewing Summit. In the meantime, you can go ahead and sign up for the free version, which is the link is in this video. So even if you win, um, you can still have signed up for the free version and I will give you um, an access code to get the, the all access pass. I've also given you a link to the ultimate bundle, which is coming up next week. You guys, it is so close. It's like five days away. 
Um, okay, so five days, the bundle goes live. It is going to be an unbelievably cheap price. And my serger class is one of the options in this bundle. So you're gonna absolutely love this. And you can um, sign up to get an email when it goes live. I will also be promoting it like crazy. Um, so go ahead and put your email address and click the link below that says ultimate bundle. And then you'll get an email on the day that bundle goes live. And um, if you buy it, I get a little kickback, which I super appreciate because it helps these uh, free live shows and free patterns keep coming your way. So there we go. There's my announcements. I will give that spiel, I think, one more time again at the end because people come and go, but there it is. So I saw a couple comments about my head hoodie. This is um, from my free women's hoodie pattern, you guys. So go to lifesosavory.com, search women's hut hoodie. Last year, I took the original hoodie pattern and I made it a little bit more oversized with a high-low hem, which is the version I'm wearing here. I'm still in my workout pants, so excuse me. But you can see how the back's a little bit lower than the front and it's a little bit more oversized than the original. Plus, I lined the hood with the pretty pink fabric. So this is made of French terry. It's so comfy, which is why I'm wearing it today because I never really fully got dressed out of my workout clothes, but here I am and I'm working away on fun projects and excited to share them with you today. So, like I said at the beginning and is linked in the description, the video description, I'm gonna make myself a Christmas nightgown. So I'm saying Christmas only because the fabric I'm using is Christmassy, um, but I'll probably wear it all winter long, starting tonight, if it works out and is as cozy and as comfortable as I think it is. So I have this beautiful double brushed poly fabric, which is so, as softer than you would even imagine. And it's not overtly Christmas, but there are candy canes coming out of these poinsettias. Um, so it's a little bit Christmas. So I've t I took the um, women's raglan, which the free pattern is linked in the description of this video. So you can download that pattern 100% um, for free. And I just extended it down and you can see that I graded out the sides just slightly, not a lot. I don't want a big flare. I don't actually really want this to be a big flowing nightgown. I want it actually to be more of a tube um, dress, but not skin tight. So I'm hoping it just kind of fits down and isn't crazy tight. Uh, we'll see as we get to it. Um, but so that is what I did for this. And I, you can just, you know, you lengthen it. I'm hoping it will be a few inches above my knee. So um, just take the raglan pattern, lengthen it down, flare it out slightly or more. I mean, if you want a really flowy nightgown, um, go ahead and flare it out as much as you want. But I just flared it out maybe an inch on either side, so not a whole lot. I have a front, I have a back. I made the back slightly longer than the front, so I have a little high-low. I'm using this green ribbed knit for the neckband. And I'm trying to make coordinating with my daughter. And I had just a bit of this fabric left, the poinsettia fabric. So I'm going to use some bits of that to make her a nightgown. So I cut the sleeves um, for mine out of this dark green rib knit, which coordinates beautifully with the fabric. And I'm gonna add cuffs of the poinsettia to tie it all together. All right, so that's what we're sewing today. I am so excited. Remember, there's a giveaway going on. Um, if you didn't hear, I'm giving away an all access pass to the free sewing summit. The all access portion is a paid portion of the free summit. And by leaving any comment here today, any comment about anything, you are entered um, to win that all access pass. I will draw a single comment from today's video tomorrow morning and a message and comment here to let the winner know. So leave me some comments. Let's get started and we're gonna sew. Oh, I forgot one more thing. I'm going to add <laughs> this cute piece on earth um, iron-on vinyl and it's actually like a fuzzy vinyl so it should be nice and soft on this pattern or on my nightgown when I finish because I think it's cute and I'm making it Christmassy so why not all right 
Let's swing over here to my sewing area and we're gonna get started. All right, so it is, let's see. <laughs> I wish you could all win, but I will say that you can purchase the All Access Pass if you don't win and it's not that much or you can um, do watch all the classes for free. And if you just plan out that those several days you're gonna be watching the classes, then you don't need to sign up for the All Access Pass. So the Sewing Summit is absolutely free and you can get all the classes um, free for 24 hours of when they're posted. And then like I said, if you want to have access to them later, that's what the All Access Pass is for. Okay, so I have edited the um, original raglan pattern to have a bit more of a scoop neck. Otherwise, I've just lengthened it, but it's um, essentially the same pattern um, as you would make for a women's raglan shirt. Just we're going to make it a bit longer. So I'm hoping this is, you know, within hopefully by the time I hem it, just a few inches above my knee. So not too long, but not too short. So you can grab this pattern for making shirts and I'm hoping after today that I can say it also makes a really fun nightgown. So I am making this out of double brush poly and ribbed knit, um, two very soft fabrics. It can be, this pattern can work with any um, knit fabric, but I wanted, of course, something comfy for a nightgown, so I think the double brush poly will be. Now, I have heard people say, and I really only have, well, I've used it, I guess, for a few things more than leggings, but I mostly use double brush poly for leggings, so I can't, but I have heard people say that because it's, um, not a natural fiber. It's not a cotton or a wool or a linen that it can be um, hot because it's not very breathable. So I guess if I wake up tonight with hot flashes <laughs> and I'm uh, roasting in my sleep, I will let you all know that it's not great. However, my daughter does have um, some pajamas made out of it and she's never commented that it's uncomfortable. So I'm assuming that because I'm usually cold anyway, and because my legs are going to be sticking out of this, that it's going to be just fine. Um, so here I have the arms sewn on to that front neckline. And then I'm going to sew the back onto one arm. And then I'll sew my neckband on. So please let me know if you have any questions along the way um, while I'm sewing this. Again, I'm hoping to create a beautiful and cozy nightgown, but I love this pattern for shirts as well. And if you click the link in the description of this video, you'll see um, many of the gorgeous shirts that I've made out of this on there. So um, now I have my four pieces sewn together open and I always make sure that I have one of the back shoulder seams open because I'm going to have um, a seam of my neckband there and I don't want that on one of the front shoulder seams. I want that on the back shoulder seam. So, um, so I, I try to avoid making that mistake, which I totally had before, leaving the, having the seam on the front is that I sew the sleeve to the two fronts first and then one of the backs and then I'm bound to have a back open. So if I close up that front quickly, then I am not gonna make the mistake of having that one left. All right, so now we're sewing on a rib knit um, neck band. And um, I'm excited because these, I did not buy these fabrics together, but they seem to coordinate really well. And like I mentioned, using a different fabric 
for the sleeves is allowing me to have enough fabric left over to sew a nightgown for my daughter. Now I think that her nightgown will be the reverse. It will be a solid color for the nightgown part and then I think I'm gonna put the floral on the sleeves. And my plan is to use the kids raglan to create that. And I have an old men's t-shirt that I'm hoping to upcycle for the um, main body part. You know me, I love reusing adult t-shirts to make things for kids. There's a lot of great fabric in adult shirts and especially if your kids are tiny, then you can sew a lot of awesome projects with that. So I check my neckline and there you can see that I have that sewn on. And I'm gonna go ahead, my serger, remember last week, was it last week that my serger threads were being kind of weird? I feel like it still hasn't fully recovered. I don't know if the, sometimes I think maybe it's pinched too tightly in these tension discs. I don't know, because there seems to be no other reason. But I'm gonna top stitch this neckline with my cover stitch. Um, and then I'll come back over and I'll sew that neckline up. So if you are top stitching your neckline with um, a double needle or a zigzag, um, any of these three methods, those three methods, you can do it after you've sewn up the shoulder seam or you can do it um, before and of course I always like doing it before because it's easier to sew when it's an open line rather than a circle. Now I folded the neck seam allowance down towards the main shirt body or the night, nightgown body and we're going to top stitch it down. So I'm using a two needle cover stitch and stitching on top of that seam allowance that's folded down towards the shirt. But you can also, like I said, you can top stitch with a double needle on your regular sewing machine. That, leave, that is also a beautiful way to finish your necklines and your hems. Um, and if you don't have that option, the simplest, but still stretchy, is probably to do a zigzag. You just want to make sure that whatever you are doing to top stitch is a, ooh, oh, we're almost to the end of this thread. Are we going to make it? Um, you want to make sure that it's a stretch stitch. Oh, you guys, we are so close. <laughs> I'll have to change out my looper thread. Oh, look at that's all we had left on the spool. <laughs> I didn't even think to change that. Check that. Okay, so there is my cover stitch stitch on the front, and there is the stitch on the back. Remember, leaving comments gives you entries into the all-access pass for the Sewing Summit giveaway, and um, yay, I'm excited to be able to give that to one of you tomorrow. I um, I didn't catch all that, so I'll have to look. All right, with right sides together, I'm now going to sew up this shoulder seam so that we have a finished circle around our top. All right. See if this seems looser now that I pulled my threads from being stuck in those tension discs. Okay, so 
let me um, finish this extra, this raw serger thread here, and then we'll turn it right side up and check it out. Um, you've never seen a machine done that. So that is, I didn't see who made that comment, but that my third machine here on the table is a cover stitch, which is used um, for hemming and top stitching. It doesn't actually sew seams, but it does stabilize them through the top stitching, and it's great for hemming. And if you look at any t-shirt you've bought from the store, that's how any top stitching is done or any hemming are done. And the bottom is a looper, and then the top is your needle. So you kind of have both the looper and the needle look going. Okay, this is so cute. Actually, I should have made a shirt out of this. Look at how cute that is that combination. Well, if I hate it as a nightgown, I'm gonna chop it off and hem it and have it as a cute top because there's no reason that this wouldn't be a cute shirt since I've essentially just lengthened a shirt. Okay, don't be afraid of the serger. I only, every time I sew knit, I use my serger. So I never don't use the serger. So, um, especially if I'm sewing knit fabric. So I would never, think to not use it. Um, my settings are pretty much across four. This is a little bit tighter at four and a half, but otherwise I start at four and then adjust from there. So if you um, are unsure about using your serger or have never gotten it out of the box, I do have a beginning serger class, um, which is great for those of you who are kind of worried or afraid to use your serger. So go to lifesosavory.com and right on that front page, there is a link for you to check out my serger class. So, but like I said, again, the serger class is going to be a part of the ultimate bundle, which I'm promoting. Um, it's home projects, ultimate bundle home projects with tons of sewing, embroidery, and quilting projects. And um, my serger class is part of that. And that goes on sale starting on the 19th. So essentially, I can't tell you how much it is, but I'll tell you it's a really good deal because essentially for the cost of my one class, you get 100 products because it's part of this bundle. So check it out. You don't want to miss it. You can click the link in the description of this video to um, put your name in to be notified when it does go live on the 19th. Otherwise, check back here on Facebook um, or on my website. I will be promoting it there. Okay, so I've put cuffs, coordinating cuffs on the ends of my sleeves, and these are gonna be about three quarter length sleeves, which is what I want. I don't want them super long, um, but there we have it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew down the side seams with right sides together. And my side seam is a bit longer because it's nightgown length, um, going down all the way to just above my knee. So I'm gonna sew these side seams and then we're gonna check the hem. Remember, I wanted a little bit of a high low hem and we will check that after the side seams are sewn before we hem it to make sure it looks like we want. And then we are going to put on my cute little um, vinyl iron on and will be set. So we, this is such a fun and easy project. And again, you can just make the shirt version of this by downloading the women's raglan and um, sewing it up. So you can see the shirt version in the post. I didn't think of making it into a nightgown until actually I saw someone was in my sewing group who, um, took one of my patterns that was actually for knit and she widened it and then made it with flannel to make matching grandma and kids nightgowns, which I thought was really sweet. I'm not a big fan of um, flannel nightgowns. I love flannel pants, but I thought, hey, I've been wanting to make a knit nightgown and um, so I thought I could use the Raglan pattern. So that's what I'm doing today and hoping this works as well as I think it will. So my side seams are not going to match up perfectly because I did not measure to make sure that they were both exactly the same length when I was cutting these out and lengthening them. 
but I knew that I was going to go back and trim them a little bit. So you can see I'm like an inch off on the bottom. Um, but I knew I was going to go back and trim and double check the hem. So I'm not surprised that we're off. Okay, so now we are going to, I think I might need to change my needles. I wonder if that is why my, um, I don't, it's really bunching. You guys, I have sewn on this for like years and years and years and this has never happened, but I think I'm gonna stop for a moment and change my needles for the other side seam just to eliminate that this is not the problem. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to change my thread and I don't know if I wanna do that. Where's the needle tool? I have like five of them. Can't find any when I'm looking. Oh, here's one. Okay, so I'm gonna change these needles because um, we'll do a little troubleshooting here, but you can see, and I just slid it, but this is not, the needle is pulling, and that is, it is not a good look. So, um, not a good look to have a gathered, and I just popped it. So either that, or I wonder if my thread is bad. Although I've used this thread before. So let's try changing the needles and um, so a serger is similar to a sewing machine. However, yes, it finishes the edge as you're sewing it. So it um, not only sews the seam with two needles, so it's like a double seam, but it also um, yeah, finishes that edge. So for knit fabrics, it's not as important because it's not gonna fray, but for non-knit fabrics that might fray, I love the fact that it you know, finishes that fabric for you so you don't have to worry about the edges fraying. I'm thinking it's been a while since I changed my needles. So maybe that will help. And I'm also going to re-thread the needles while I have it pulled apart. So excuse me for the pause in programming. <laughs> I know you guys get to see like the live troubleshooting here. Okay. So let's see what we've got if we, now I always in the past have said, you know, make sure that you have really pulled your um, needle thread and your looper thread, you know, tightly into those tension discs um, as a way to get the proper tension. But then of course, Today I'm second guessing myself and thinking is it like being pinched in there? But I'm trying to think, so last week when I did my live show, this was a bit of a problem too, but I've sewed since then and I'm trying to think what I made and if, but maybe I didn't use the serger. Maybe I just used my sewing, I can't think of what I, I've sewed a few things. Oh, I made my daughter leggings. And that would have been on here. So, I don't know. It just feels like it's really tight. Huh. I don't know. But I did make her leggings and it was fine. I think it was fine. So, I don't know. Either that or I just didn't... Um, Give me the same trouble as it's giving me today. But of course, whenever you're sewing live, it's 
got to come up with some sort of trouble. I also have my um, machine light taped over um, for photo and video because um, if I leave it up, then there's a big glare when I'm taking photographs or like this when I'm doing video. So I have a little bit less light because I've got it um, taped up. Okay, here's a scrap piece of fabric. And uh, we're gonna try and see. If not, we're gonna adjust our differential feed and see if that makes a difference. However, look at how stretchy that is, and there is no puckering. That is a flat seam. Okay, so take two. I'm going to re sew that same side seam because I just pulled on it and broke some threads, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to re sew that side seam. Then we'll sew the other side seam and we'll pick up where we left off. As I was saying, so let's hope, I don't know which of those two things fixed it. I'll never know. Was it the needle? Was it the re-threading? Sometimes I just do two things at once, but that is very nice and stretchy. Okay. Um... Sometimes you should probably try one solution at a time so you really know which one worked. Um, you talking about this serger? It is a great one. I mean, like I said, I have very, very, I'm so shocked when I have trouble sewing on it or trouble with the tension because I so rarely have any issues. It usually plays nice with pretty much any type of fabric that I'm sewing. And, um, you know, like I said, I almost always start with just the tension at four and then I adjust slightly from there, but it is rare that I have to do any major adjustments. So that's why, you know, this, I'm really not sure, but I was thinking maybe it was the needles. So it's worth trying out. Okay, let's do the other side seam. And then we'll turn this baby right side out, show you what it looks like, and um, touch up the hem a little bit. All right, so I'm sewing down the underarm making sure that the seam underneath of the arm meets, that where the two fabrics come together. I want those to meet well. And, uh, and then we'll check out the check out the uh, hem. I need to plug my iron in too for putting on the heat transfer. So I'll do that when we um, go over. And this seam, look at how nice and flat that is. There's no wibbles and wobbles. Plus, it's stretchy. I'm not breaking any threads when I stretch it. So, uh, again, I think the problem is fixed. I don't know if it was something with my threading. Or I had, I had recently also changed this back from, I think I had pink or white thread on there, back to dark thread. So, 
maybe something happened with that, um, but I'm not sure. So um, there we go. All right, I'm gonna pop right here and grab my iron, plug that in. and my ironing pad, and then we'll take a look at the hem while the iron heats up. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put this piece on earth on the front of my nightgown, but before I do that, I wanna check out the high-low hem, and it's not gonna be much of a high-low hem. It is a minor one. Um, but I do have a little bit. So let's tip this down so you can see. And in order to check out my hem, I match up the side seams. Okay, what, what's, where's the front? So this is the front of the nightgown and I want that to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to leave the full length on the back, curve up slightly towards the side seam, and then just take another inch or so off the front to make that, you can see, a little bit longer on this side. And wait, how do I hold this level? <laughs> and a little bit shorter, there you go, you can see. So my back, it's just a little bit longer than my front and you can see that on there. So um, we are going to swing back over the cover stitch. I'll bring you a little bit closer for those of you that aren't familiar with this machine and you can really see how it top stitches. And then um, we will finish by going up and putting the um, thing my bob on it, you know, heat transfer. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so just, just, let's just take a quick look at what we have here. So there it is, super cute, super festive. You can see, kind of lift it up high enough that the back's a little bit longer than the front and um, about three quarter length sleeves. So. Very, very cute. Don't forget to thread it. Oh yes, this. So I like to use um, Maxi Lock stretch thread on my looper of my cover stitch. Sorry, my thread is like stored right down here. Um, so let me think what I wanna put on there. I guess I'll put on, pink since it's right there and you guys are so helpful you know I would have gotten my fabric all in here and I would have sewed for about two stitches and then I would have said why isn't it working and then I would have had to start all over and there might have been a knot and it would have been a big mess so so appreciate it okay so if you turn the hand crank a couple times you can usually get the thread that's in there to release from being caught up in the needle threads. And if you have threaded a serger and haven't loved it, um, threading a cover stitch is nothing like it. It's so easy. It doesn't um, mess up. It doesn't break once you start, of course, knock on wood, it will today. But um, generally it's very straightforward in the threading and not at all problematic like you may have had with some um, serger issues. So the two needle threads are very simple and then there's one looper, which I'm threading now. And then we just turn the crank a couple times to get it going and I will grab a practice piece of fabric just because I should. Let's 
do a few stitches and make sure it's all back in business. But it looks great. So again, a cover stitch makes a stretchy top stitch, which I got some puckers in there. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And now you can see I have bright pink um, on the back for my looper. So I don't know if I love that, but it will work. There's some pink in this fabric. So I like to start on the side seam, fold it over when I'm hemming around the bottom. I'm going to leave my narrow two stitch um, seam on here. Sometimes for hemming, I will switch over to the wide two or three stitch. Um, but I think today it's okay to do the narrow. So I'm keeping the check on the back. I'm feeling with my finger that I'm sewing on top of the edge of the fabric. But I like to check because I'm not always 100% accurate just going by the feel of it. But there's also guidelines on the front of your foot, which are useful. But I want to make sure that I'm catching the edge of that fabric and not leaving a raw edge on there. So we are almost now to the other side seam. And sometimes with the cover stitch, I like to put my hand on the back to get over that bump because occasionally it seems to get stuck when I'm sewing over another seam. And um, then you can end up with bumps or weird blobs in your fabric. And I don't, I want it to keep sewing smoothly. So we'll do that and we're almost back around. So I'm gonna trim off this starting lump because we are going to stitch over it and overlap our stitches to come back around and finish this hem. Okay, so now we should almost be done and we can take a look at our finished product and see what you think. And I hope this inspires you. I don't know how many of you um, like nightgowns. I also, if you are just wanting PJ pants and this gets you inspired for holiday PJ pants sewing, I do have a free um, family PJs. Everyone in the whole family can um, have matching flannel PJs if you want. So, all right, let's take a look at this and then I will model it for you um, over my leggings, but let's take a look first. So cute, right? There's the bottom, the hem. I think it looks very festive. Let's put on our heat transfer vinyl and then I'll show you how it looks. Okay. So my um, iron should be play hot and I want to lay this out and find the center. And then kind of put this on the center. I guess I don't want it too high or too low really. So I'm finding the center of the neck band, the a of piece kind of is a little bit higher, so it's easy to kind of see the middle. And then we're gonna put this on and press several seconds on each location. Of course, if you also have a heat press, it's great for this. But, so I'm just going over each of the parts. I was thinking maybe I should have done like an overlay or an underlay layer of 
red or white to make this gray vinyl pop a little bit, but maybe subtle is okay too. So usually I say heat the vinyl until you can see the fabric fibers through it. However, on fuzzy heat transfer, you will never see the fabric fibers through it because it's fuzzy, but I thought that might be good for sleeping. But I will show you. So this one I cut for Rose's little nightgown. It says joy to the world. So that's what I'm gonna put on hers. And of course, if you don't have a heat press, using pressure, as you can see that I'm doing, is also helpful. And my iron is hot, as hot as it will go. And then I think we'll let it cool. And hopefully we can pull this off. Seems like it's pretty hot. So let me, we'll let that cool for a second and then we'll see if we can pull it off. So let me just, while we're waiting for this, give one more plug before I model this for you, for the two links below. So one um, is the Sewing Summit. It is free. You can sign up using the link below. I'm teaching a fabulous Christmas stocking class in the Summit. For free, you get to watch all the classes um, for 24 hours after they published. If you want um, access to them later, you can purchase the all access pass and I am giving away a free all access pass tomorrow morning using the comments in this video as an entry. So comment here to be entered for one free all access pass for the sewing summit, which is the first week in November. Two, I also have a link below to the ultimate bundle, which is a home sewing home projects bundle. It's awesome for those of you who like to create because it's chock full of quilting, sewing patterns, um, home decor projects, and my serger class. So all of that is included in the ultimate bundle and that will be going live on the 19th, which is just a few days away. So sign up below in the link to get an email when it goes live to make sure that you um, make sure that you know when it's going live. Otherwise, I'm sure I will also be telling you more about it next week and reminding you that it is live. This fuzzy heat transfer fur is so soft. You can also buy heat transfer that is um, called athletic heat transfer and it is stretchy and isn't like a hard crusty vinyl. So for sleepwear, I think that would also be nicer. But look it, you guys, it's so cute. And hopefully my sleep is peaceful, right? Okay, so here, take a look at my kitchen for a minute um, while I change and see if it fits. All right, we're doing it. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, ta-da! So I made the size, I have, I have my athletic leggings on underneath, okay? So it might be a little bit sticky because it's not skin here, it's leggings. Um, but uh, I use the size that I normally make for myself for a shirt um, for the top, okay? So there's, I didn't enlarge the top. And then when I got to the bottom of the shirt pattern, I just went out a tiny bit, but it's so stretchy. So it actually is fairly fitted around the hips, but I like it because then it won't be like loose and baggy. But of course you can adjust, can you see the bottom? You can adjust the, um... look it, it's such a good length. I'm gonna wear this tonight, I love it. Um, so you can adjust how flowy you want it. You could even start going out from the armpits if you want it looser here, but I wanted it fitted. And um, again, you could make long sleeves or the three quarter inch sleeves, whatever you think you want. I love the way that turned out. And I feel 
so festive, you guys. This is the first really Christmas thing um, that I've sewn, but of course, I did so. I did do a whole stocking class, so I did sew Christmas clock stockings and edit video for like three days. So I did get in the Christmas mood then, but this is really the first thing that I have Christmas for myself. But now I kind of wish this was a shirt. Wouldn't it be gorgeous as a shirt with this? So I have these decals, so I might have to make myself some more Christmas shirts with beautiful um, vinyl just for fun. So, okay, anyway, gonna call it a day. I'm so glad you guys were here. Um, yes, so I will post pictures of Rose and I, I'm planning actually to post this as a blog post this Christmas um, nightgown idea next Tuesday and with both of us in our nightgowns. So stay tuned for that. And I don't know, I think that's it. My timer's going off. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so stay tuned for that. Grab this free women's raglan pattern and sew up fun shirts or make yourself a nightgown and sign up for the Sewing Summit and the Ultimate Bundle notification. And I will see you next week. I hope you have a great rest of your week. See you later. Bye.